Oh, please. Thank you. And thank you so much. Amen. That was amazing. Dr. Inman has already set the stage uh, for me to follow. So thank you, Dr. Inman. You did most of my talk. <laughs> but as y'all know, um, OER is very accessible, as Dr. Inman has talked about. So when I first learned about OER a year ago, when I was invited to join this committee, so I found out that OER was available for our students. And it was a blessing because as you all know, we were in the pandemic at that time. So for respiratory therapists, we're a specialty. So with us, we were very challenged because suddenly here we were in at home on a computer without access to our labs initially. So you can imagine how many challenges that could have been trying to teach our students how to use the technology. So that's when I um, had the opportunity to join with uh, Dr. Warner Chisholm, Dr. Milton, Dr. Apadu and the team as well. And they taught me how this could be a valuable resource to help us at a very critical time. So when I started to look at it and talk to my colleagues, they said to me, well, you're not gonna find anything related to respiratory care. You know it's out there, but the quality of that is not very good. And I thought, hmm, do I believe this or do I do what I do, which is research and find out on my own? So I began to look at it. And of course, a lot of people think that respiratory therapists are nurses. So we get kind of grouped under the health sciences with nursing. And you know, that's okay, because a lot of us are, you know, we cross discipline. And so we do use some of the same techniques uh, with our respiratory therapists. But again, we're specializing. And all of us know that during the pandemic, um, that respiratory therapists were front and center with those ventilators because many of the uh, ventilators across the nations were not available. Um, students uh, actually got permits to go to work to help out and use those ventilators. So we were challenged. So what I did was I worked with Dr. Warner and Dr. Warner initially said, but that's okay, we're gonna fix this. And I said, hmm, how can we fix it? She said, well, we're gonna set this up so we can have a specific category for the cardiorespiratory science program. Wow. And so she did that. And then after she did that, and as she said, well, and then you can go out and you can find those specialty resources that you may need, and you can curate those to start to put those in that repository so it can be in that area so that when people search for this, they will find these specifically very quickly, very accessibly. Wow, look at that. So we did that and we started to work on it and we started to develop the specialty cases. Uh, with mechanical ventilation, oxygen assessment with our patients, all the things that we needed so that I could embed these into my classroom very quickly. So you guys can imagine how powerful that was. Next slide, please. So again, as Dr. Emman had mentioned, we wanna engage our students. Engaging is very important for this population. Most of our students, they need that on hands experience. But I was challenged because I couldn't get into the lab initially. We did go back, even during COVID, we had to come back on campus a couple of weeks because there was just no way. But initially we found apps, we found mechanical ventilation apps online. We were able to find um, cases uh, where we could present the clinical cases online. And so we engaged our students with these apps. We empowered them to be able to use these apps and wow, it really, really impact their learning outcomes. Student says, wow, this feel like we're really in the lab. Next slide, please. So again, we've heard this over and over, over and over, you can't be free. Free makes it very, very affordable for our students. We all know that many students we don't retain them because they cannot afford the textbooks. Sometimes they cannot afford to pay for their classes. If they have to choose between eating or paying for their rent, we all know if they have to choose between eating or paying for their books or their rent, then they're gonna choose eating and their rent because we all have to survive. So when we can make these things affordable and accessible to our students, we retain them. The retention rates are much higher and we know that for a fact, all of us know that. So again, that's what we were able to provide. The same topics, the same points that Dr. Inman brought home, I saw those same points. And no, we didn't even have to collaborate because it was so pervasive for our students. Next slide, please. So getting started, I um, took a couple of students, I showed them online all, um, how to start uh, 
you know, to become a member. I engaged this in my classroom. I put it in my syllabus and I made it a part of their course assignment. And that's the way I got around, you know, having to get or go through curriculum change committees and get everything approved. I just made an assignment in my classroom very quickly. And so students um, joined, they became members, and then they began to develop and, um, and do the research and find the bookmarks and do the repository of the data. And it was interesting because some of the things that they found, I would have never found. And, you know, students are very savvy with computer systems and they were able to find these very quickly. And so they develop a lot of the databases that we needed and some of the clinical cases that they could use to present in their presentations. So that's how we um, got started with uh, developing more specific respiratory um, uh, resources. Next, please. Again, clinical resources was an area of specialty that we were challenged with. So we, we focused on mechanical ventilation, the review of these uh, applications for our arterial blood gases and clinical cases. So those were the three that we really practiced very greatly in our labs. So again, we went out and we found a lot of different resources that we could repository into that. And in addition to that, students also were able to develop their videos. Next slide, please. And here, a student comment, he said he found it easy to uh, navigate this website. He said he was really shocked to see what he found. He didn't know that this was available. He didn't know that there were texts and videos. He didn't know that he could use these things to study. And so this was uh, contagious throughout the group. They really didn't know. So as we know, people perish because of the lack of wisdom. So my challenge is I might not be an expert in OR yet, but I wanna learn how to become that expert so I can teach my students how to use this and to uh, engage this every single moment of every single day because it is an invaluable resource that uh, I feel is such a missed opportunity to not have embedded in our courses. Um, so he shared this with his other colleagues and they all use these as studies, uh, uh, resources when they were studying for their exams. And again, it was very engaging. Next slide, please. So, and as Dr. Chislam said, in the future, uh, for faculty projects, I would like to focus more on developing uh, online courses with the use of OER. And as I learn more about this, I will do so. And also I would like to develop my test banks with this and as well as uh, look at developing um, customized textbooks in the future. Um, the nice thing that I found about this is that it had that you know, uh, create the commons license where you didn't have to uh, go through a lot of red tape to be able to revise and remix certain parts of other people's available resources. Because oftentimes, I don't know if you guys find it, sometimes when I get textbooks, the chapters are not in the order in which I want to teach them. So I'm rearranging this and I'm like, I'm going to teach airway management before I put them on a ventilator and start talking about the ventilator first, I got to intubate the patient. So a lot of times those textbooks that are commercialized, a thousand pages, and I'm not going to use all those chapters. I need to get right down to the nitty gritty of what my patient needs. So how do I develop a customized textbook, as Dr. Inman also mentioned, that we as faculty can use? I think part of it as faculty in discovering this was that, yes, it's out there. And yes, it might not be exactly what we want. But like Dr. Melton said, we have to do some work to help develop it. It starts with us. And so we have to take the opportunities that are in front of us to make us be able to be uh, uh, to bring this to our students in a way that is very succinct, very positive, and very powerful. And then we can engage them to be able to further help us develop this. So that is my plan. Next slide, please. So here's some examples, and these are what they found, just showing you straight from uh, their sets. They all developed their websites as well as uh, became members. So they began to bookmark these. And so these are some of the mechanical ventilator apps that were in OER, some of the clinical case studies, which of course we have to certify them in ACLS. So they were able to study and practice their rhythm strips from these. And um, I didn't make them active on this video, but they were very active. So they were able to engage with these. Next slide, please. And then an example, this was really cool because this was a game that they could play. So they was able to change the numbers around and then they could learn how to diagnose these blood gases with this app. And again, I would never have found this. And when I asked them to find things, this is what they brought to the table. So we can see what they wanted here. And I think the next slide is my last slide, please. So again, um, this one is active. Uh, it was a video um, that was on YouTube and it talks about the mechanical ventilation. If you wanna clip it a little bit there, um, Dr. Ampadu, they can hear it. 
Welcome to Calculations Module, Ventilator Variables. In this module, we're going to cover compliance, both dynamic and static compliance, airway resistance, inspiratory time, peak flow rate, and calculation of IE ratios. Okay, then let's look at dynamic compliance. And again, you can see that in this example, it's the tidal volume That's divided enough. by your peak pressure minus any peep. I just want to give them a little clip of it. So you can imagine how powerful this would be. And I think the last slide just said thank you um, and look forward to any questions. So you can imagine how powerful this was for our students and engaging. And I'm proud to know that the students themselves are excited about this. So as I stated, I'm still learning more about OER and thank you, thank you to Dr. Milton and all the team members that has brought this to TSU for us as faculty um, to learn more about because I, I really feel like it's gonna, as we say, change that game. And I think we're gonna be able to be much more powerful in research as Dr. Chisholm said and use this even from a faculty standpoint. standpoint. And one thing that I did do because I, when people tell me that something is not high quality, I said, this is reviewed by uh, peer reviewers. So I myself engaged and became a uh, Merlo peer reviewer. So I took the course and I, I became a peer reviewer. So now what I'm doing is I'm reviewing some of the specialized uh, resources that they are putting out there for respiratory therapists. So I'm on the medical side of reviewing that material, the same way I was reviewing the textbooks. So I said, well, I'm gonna review the material so that when my colleagues say that to me the next time, I'm saying, well, here's what you can do to help change it. And that's my story. And that's, and that's how we're using OER. So thank you all for listening.